Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the first episode of Coming in Clutch. My name is Lorenzo Iacomini, a.k.a. The Speedy Guidi. And I'm Cody Lewis, a.k.a. The LA Car Spotter. And this is our new podcast in which we talk about cars, car shows, supercars, car stuff, car people, car things. cars everything under the sun pretty much mostly cars we're going to talk about some other stuff but uh i don't know how that's going to come up i think the main attraction of the show is talking about la car culture and what's going on around this area because it's obviously a car centric city and there are cars here that nobody ever sees ever and we see them all the time Pretty much. Right? Yeah, we're like flooded with them. It's honestly, I think that uh, we wanted to do this instead of just being a, a vlogger, a guy with a camera in front of his face. <laughs> <laughs> like, how many times do you go to a car show and every single kid and everybody just like, they want to have a YouTube channel and be a vlogger, but we kind of wanted to have a different approach and be a little bit more... Uh, educational, a little bit more informative about it. I think our whole thing here, guys, is that we don't want to sound like experts. We are definitely not experts. I want to sound like he an expert. He is not an expert. <laughs> he is the <laughs> biggest dingus you've ever met in your life. But that is kind of what this show is about. We're learning. We're trying to teach you what we know because we do know a lot about stuff. Um, a little about a lot. We know a, lot a little about more about the general than the average Joe, but... We have this show because we want to bring people on. We want to interview people. We want to talk to experts um, in various fields and just to get, you know, start a discussion. Get the thing going. We can learn. You can learn. Yeah. But we, we each have our specialties. I have certain knowledge in, uh, in certain American cars, vintage cars, a lot of hyper car stuff, new news. This guy knows a lot about the engines, a lot about the technical stuff. He also knows how to speak Italian. So, you know, there's, it's just, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on. But why don't we, I forgot, we, we, we should probably do our intros. Cody, would you like to start just a little background on yourself, who you are and why you're sitting here and people are listening to you right now? Yeah. So I am uh, from New York originally where... New York. New York. Pizza and, uh, and taxis. And <laughs> so and bagels. So we have like a ton of great cars there, except it's only nice weather about like three weeks out of the year, pretty much. But dude, it's the best three weeks on planet oh, Earth. Man. Everybody loves New York in pretty, the fall. Pretty much. <laughs> right? I mean, it's not a lie. Um, but I moved out to California about four years ago, and it is like cartopia out here it is honestly what was happening is i was posting pictures of cars on my own instagram and all my friends were getting pissed off like well, you're just flooding my feed with cars like what's up man i'm like i can't help that i see all these awesome cars all day long like, you're just sick of shit. so <laughs> yeah so i just decided i'd start putting them on my own separate car spotter instagram and uh and it just kind of took off and now I drive around trying to find the coolest cars, the coolest cars there are because they're and, all, they're all and here. He's being modest, guys. He just hit thirty thousand followers. I did. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna insert some uh, audience. We'll put cheer, some, yeah, <laughs> yeah. cheering noises. Um, I think. Um, no, it's a it's an admirable thing, dude. Thirty thousand followers. I can barely break seven thousand. Not that numbers count and uh, it's engagement. Yeah, whatever. it's not. But like, to me, honestly, you got the, you got the goods right now. To That's me, it's not about the numbers. Uh, it's the same reason why um, I'm not doing, or we are not doing the traditional like camera in your face vlogging YouTube. It's because thirty thousand followers to me, truthfully, means it's thirty thousand people that are passionate in the same things that I'm passionate about. And I get to share, I get to share the cars that I see with 
30,000 people that don't get to see those cars. So I use it as an opportunity to share what I see with everybody. And I think that it's, uh, it just, and just do it on volunteer work, you know? Yeah. Contribute to the community. And what about you? What's your story, Guidi? My background, um, he already kind of touched on it. My dad is from Italy. That's why I call myself a speedy Guidi. My entire family's Italian. Um, the, it's actually a funny story. How the reason why I got uh, the name, the Speedy Guidi, I'll tell you that for another episode. It used to be the Speedo Guido, and then <laughs> yeah. they had to change it. Still it still is, only summer months. <laughs> but basically, born and raised in San Francisco, uh, graduated college a couple years ago. Um, always been super passionate about cars, love anything under the sun. I'm starting to become a big classic car guy as of recently because I get to drive some of these cars. Um, I can't explain to you why I get to drive a lot of supercars and hypercars, but I do. And you just got to take my word for it. There's a lot. (laughs) (laughs) Just question mark, question mark, question mark. Just believe me when I tell you that I've driven the GT2 RSs of the world, the Senna's, and like, I don't mean to sound cocky and like, I've driven all these cars and I'm cool, but like, it just, I have and I understand the people that own the cars and what those cars are like to own and to maintain, specifically maintain. And um, it's not all you think. It's a lot of smoke and mirrors, but it's still a wonderful world. And I moved down to LA about a year and a half ago, and I love my job, and I love everything I do. Um, I'm a aspiring automotive journalist, so hopefully one day I can work at Motor Trend or Car and Driver or Road and Track or whatever. And, um, or coming in clutch. Or coming in clutch when it's a media empire. When coming in clutch is featuring Motor Trend. Or <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, we're turning them down for, <laughs> for yeah. interviews, whatever. Seriously. But that's basically my background. Um, like Cody said, I kind of know a lot of numbers and different stuff like that. And I have some, like big appreciation for driving. Um, that's kind of where I come from. So um, I like going to car shows and looking at cars. But at a certain point, like I want to rip the freaking thing. I want to get sideways. I want to lay some 11s. I unfortunately <laughs> haven't had the amazing opportunity to drive even a tenth of the cars that Lorenzo has been able to drive. So he's definitely going to be able to give you an insider perspective on what it's like to actually experience the cars and to drive them around town. Um, but in addition to that, we're also going to have a ton of experts that own these cars and drive them for more than 10 minutes or and have you know experience owning them and paying for them and paying for the maintenance and um and if it's worth it to them and and why it's worth it to them so that's that's also what we're going to do here is have a, a lot of experts that know more than me and lorenzo to give you guys the real story we're here for you guys. We're not doing this for us. You don't like waking up early Saturday and talking about cars all day. I mean, just kidding. We freaking love it. That's like <laughs> butter. I'm all fired up. Yeah, every there. Saturday. But and Sunday. I think we should transition. We did all the intro. We've done all that. And you guys kind of get what this show is going to be about. Um, maybe we should transition into Car Week. I know that was a couple weekends ago. Yeah. But there's a lot of cool stuff that goes on there. If you guys don't know what it is, it's a huge car show in Pebble Beach. It's it was basically a big summer. It was a big summer. Big summer. In in total, is a huge summer. I think Car Week was an awesome way to wrap up the summer. Yes, for sure. Um, we coined the term Carcella. Do you want to give the viewers a little a little background on Carcella? All right. So Carcella, I, I'm not like we're not super proud of the term Carcella. Don't get us wrong. Um, it just like every other public event. Um, is becoming more and more of a spectacle, partly due to social media. So we've seen a lot of saturation in the YouTube market and Instagram and all these different places of people just want to make content. So uh, what's a better way to make content than attract, uh, do crazy things to attract a lot of attention or, uh, or just try to, just try to sneak into every event that you can get into and, and everything is private and everything. And basically it's just become like an Instagram spectacle, um, on, to a certain extent, the beauty behind car week is that it's not that. So, um, the whole slowly 
becoming that, and that's kind of what we're satirizing here. Yeah, is what we're trying to say, right? So, uh, so yeah, exactly. Like so, I can tell you right now, I've been going to Car Week my entire life. I didn't know it was called Car Week until like three years ago. To tell you the complete truth, like I thought it was, I, mean, I thought it was. It the, wasn't always a week. Pebble Beach long. Car. I thought it was a Pebble <laughs> Beach car show. Like my entire life, like I went to these the Concorso Italiano, and I was like, wow, this is a place where there are. 5,000 red Ferraris. Like, this is the coolest thing of all time. That's, like, my first summer. I think it was, like, 2004, 2003 when I was, like, in third grade. Yeah, I remember, and I really like, got into that. But the Concourse like, d'Elegance. Like, yeah. I always knew about the Concourse d'Elegance like, as a kid. I always knew about that. I didn't know about all these other yeah. ancillary events that are happening around it. But, it, I like, the Concourse d'Elegance in Pebble Beach was, like, I mean, it's world-renowned. So right, it's, and it's... It's an Great. awesome thing, but it's kind of turned into one of those things where it's just like, I mean, like anything, it's just manifesting into like, you know, douchebags taking over and doing donuts in the middle of Carmel by the Sea. You know who you are and you know who we're talking about, but I'm not going to mention names. But I think it's more, I think it's more that, it's less that, but it's more the, the fact that every single person now has their cell phone out. Every single person now has their camera out. Everybody wants to be the next big vlogger on Insta on uh, social media. Everybody wants to be the next big thing, essentially, on social media because they see all these other rock stars and and they just. Uh, I mean, it's an awesome platform. It, YouTube and Instagram. It, it's an awesome platform. It gives people a way to get you know their opinions out there and their images and their work and. It's cool. It's just uh, it's starting to overtake in certain regards. We're losing kind of the whole reason why Car Week was beautiful in the first place. Just people getting together and like talking about cars. And now it's kind of like, all right, who has like the coolest spec Senna out there? And who's like, but like, yeah, none of that. None of that. The none of that. Coolest picture of it. And who's the first to to post a video of it on YouTube? And like that's none of that matters because these those cars go into hibernation for the rest of the year and they come out and it's stupid. But <laughs> nonetheless, a lot of cool cars were debuted that weekend, and there were a lot a of a lot of sick cars. What we wanted to touch on one of our big things was the EV hypercars of Car Week because it seems like this year there were like there was a, there was like a week slash a month where like. Five EV supercars, hypercars came out with like 2,000 horsepower. And I was like reading it because the Pinfarina came out. I was like, that's sick. And I think it might have been the first one. And then there's like the Lotus Uvaya. And I was like, okay, what the heck's this? And then like re- as of recently, like the new Lamborghini $3 million CN. What about the Rimac? The Rimac. Yeah. That's kind of been the like Rimac, in the back. This is like kind of been this the is their the second. Time. This is their Concept 2. Right. So this is like the, the second iteration right. of the Rimac. And like not on the EV scale, but there's like the Valhalla too. But that's like also like an insanely expensive fast car that a lot people, of hyper cars a lot of limited edition out. stuff that's not really feasible in the real world but like they're there and people lose their minds over it i mean i think there's a couple things about these companies building these cars so partly it is you know like lotus they're trying to rebrand i mean ev is huge and this is obviously the year of ev electric vehicles i mean like all these companies want to put electric in even if they're using gas but yeah this was definitely the year that all the electric companies came out and showed off but um i think like especially with companies like lotus they're using it as a way to kind of showcase technologies that will eventually trickle down into their future models right i mean lotus is has been rebranded now and i believe they're under new ownership yeah so this is obviously an attempt for them to change the the look of lotus and the and lotus's whole branding and image right i mean it's two million dollars lotuses are like set fifty thousand dollar cars for this way for this car from a, an elise yeah <laughs> two thousand horsepower electric thing it's it's bonkers. But um, yeah, it's like it's but that's the thing also with electric vehicles comes this incredible <laughs> incredible amount of power. These cars, the Pininfarina has 1900 horsepower. <laughs> like, like that's dude, it's insane and it's like they're all full of it's a, it's the same like formula with every single one. It's yeah. a mid-engine like huge battery, huge dense batteries, four-wheel drive and like 
upwards of 1500 horsepower. Yeah. And like they all do it in like a kind of a, just with a different body. And it's cool. I mean, it's cool that these companies are making these technologies, but yeah, we in California get to see this stuff way more often than anybody else in the world. Very true. So we're going to see these cars soon on the road, but for the most part, like none of you guys are ever going to see these cars. Like they are in such limited numbers and the and the customers that buy these cars usually don't drive them ever and they just either collect them or they just buy them to have them or resell them afterwards but i mean most of these cars are, are never going to get driven They're never going to see 2000 horsepowers being used and i think i think it's easy to demonize the owners being like dude you have a bugatti why aren't you driving it like people get i get that all the time like how can you have that car and not drive it. I completely understand people that don't drive their cars, but I don't necessarily agree with it, but it's like, those cars cost so much money, dude. Having a $2 million thing around you on wheels, around other people and moving boxes that go like upwards of 100 miles an hour, just being around other people and a thing that expensive that you are also piloting is a huge liability. Like in every single way, like so much shit can happen. It's not just you on the road, it's other people, but like, that is a terrifying thing if you really think about it. That is a house on wheels that you're just taking down and get some coffee that you street park that a bird can shit on and ruins the paint, which is also 50,000. Like, there's a lot of the numbers add up and I understand why people are like, I don't even want to deal with it. I, to that, I say, why would you buy in the first place? Well, because it's like a, I think it's, an, it's an investment and this and that, but to say like, why would you buy that car if you're not going to drive it is kind of like a, surface level thing to say because there's a lot more I think the conversation it. of buying cars and keeping them and buying cars and driving them I mean we can have a conversation about that for like forever an entire day right forever and, but but I think the fact that a lot of these companies are coming out with these ridiculous hypercars there's more and more hypercars on the market I mean 10 years ago what were the, like, there weren't that, not every brand was making no. a hypercar. And if they did, they were making a hypercar like every 10, 10 years. years. Yeah. But now it's like every year, uh, every year they come out with a new limited edition, more crazy version. And, and I mean, you got to think of the customer. I mean, think of the customer that buys, buys one of these, I mean, I don't know. I'm thinking specifically of these Bugatti guys. Right. You know, because Bugatti as a company, everybody knows that, or everybody might not know, but Bugatti as a company, they shut down, I think in like 1994, they went bankrupt and then they were kind of, uh, they were revived by the Volkswagen group. Mm -hmm. And then uh, basically they came out with, the Veyron and the Veyron was basically like there was so much criticism because it cost more money in man hours to build a Veyron than what they made from those cars. Right. So like they, the company actually lost money on the Veyrons. Like, but the idea behind that was basically to showcase Volkswagen Group like the pinnacle of their engineering engineering prowess. and design and all that and you know and bugatti really took off and i think that now they are coming out with like you know they the veyron was out for like i don't know i don't know the numbers but the veyron was out for a long time before the chiron came out Dude, it's about and now, 15 years yeah and then the chiron came out and it was only a couple more years before they introduced like the Chiron Sport, you know? I mean, yeah. they obviously had different iterations of the of the Veyron, but but then they besides the Chiron Sport, then it's like they come out with these super limited versions, the Devo, the Cento Dieci, which is the Cento Dieci. Cento Dieci. This guy will always correct me. That's so funny. <laughs> I can't, can't say <laughs> um, I can't say any Italian words in front of this guy. Um but yeah, like they come out with the, and I wonder like the people that are buying these cars, like the guy that buys a Devo, 
Okay, do they tell them next year we're actually going to be coming out <laughs> with yeah. an even crazier car? Yeah, you're, it's, you're, it's only you're, a million bucks more, but you're, but we're not going to tell you about it. And oh yeah, and you're not going to get your Devo for like two, three years. Yeah. So we're going to introduce this, and you're not even going to have your cool car by the time you have it. It's like old news. Yeah. Five, ten other companies. And those are. Very specifically, the cars that no one will ever, ever, ever drive, and you kind of forget about. Yeah. And those are just like the one-offs that like confided to the history of you folks. But I don't know. We could talk about that all day, and I think that's for another, another episode and for more cars to come out, and we can kind of talk about that more. Yeah. I mean, should we segue into? Is this I, is what this is what happens when we just go off on tangents. We'll just talk. But this for, is gonna be the show. I hope you are prepared. And we are going to just go off on tangents and probably never get to what we have written down to actually speak about. We did, we're doing pretty good. But, yeah, we're working our way but down. What I, yeah, but we'll just kind of talk about stuff and whether or not we're right is completely up to you guys to call us out on in the comments and do this and that. We want you guys to be like, what Cody just said was wrong. What was wrong? What Lorenzo just said was compl- like, he's an idiot for saying that. Like, say that because we, we want encourage that. you we want to that. engage. And we it's encourage good. you to correct us and make recommendations and suggestions and throw information. We want to know what you guys know. Right? If we're sharing our knowledge, we want you guys to share your knowledge. So if you know more about the car, put it in the comments. Tell us all about it. We're more than happy to read through the comments. And if you have something to say, we'll let people know. Write us a letter. We'll read it on here. He'll or just it. send us an email. So that's right. I don't have a mailbox. I have a mailbox. Yeah, you have a mailbox. You get Amazon Prime packages, dude. They go to my door. (laughs) But uh, no, we are not experts, and we want everything. Like we can stress anything from this video is that we are two ordinary dudes that love cars that happen to know more than the average person, but we don't know everything. So we want we we all right. But besides that, we go to pretty much. Every car show, every, car every show. like super car show, and we're going to be going to more shows that are of different types, more, um, you know, some tuner car shows, some vintage car shows, off-road shows, like Porsche all car kinds shows, of shows, hyper car shows. So we already go to a ton of shows and we know a ton of people that are actual experts that do have collections and we are going to bring them on. I know I said this earlier, but... But we are not experts, and we will give you experts. <laughs> we will become experts. We will bring you experts. Last thing before we shut off, I think we're we're we've been talking for like a solid twenty twenty five minutes, which is great. It seems felt like a minute. I'm having a lot of fun. Um, I have here Audi R. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we should just. Totally off tangent, but we're going to talk about the Audi RS6 because it's coming. This to is like America. the biggest news. This is the biggest it's the big, news. It's big in news, cars. but it's, it's great because it's not the new Koenigsegg that's coming out that everyone's freaking out about. It's I Instagram love clickbait. It. And like <laughs> the fact that it's an Audi RS6, it's a wagon that people are losing their minds over that's probably going to sell for like $100,000 over MSRP is wild. And you got to celebrate that because people actually care about wagons. Yo, this guy's a big wagon guy. He is. He just bought a wagon. Guy. He just bought a new B six, B eight, B eight all road, and B8. he's doing he's tuning it up, and we'll insert some photos and stuff right here, right now. But it's like, dude, the, the R six is gonna kick ass. It has mild it's hybrid intervention. Right now. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> it has mild hybrid um, technology, and I think that's not used for performance in any way, shape, or form. It's just kind of like, no, I don't think get the car like quick, like quick little movements here and there and like just whatever. I don't really know. Um, Basically, I'm just super excited because they haven't had this car in the United States ever. I think they had the, R- or they do the RS6? They did the RS6 and the RS4. Back in the day. And the B5, right? Yeah, yeah. Or that, they had the RS4, not the a wagon. B5 RS4. But either way, the RS6 either way, is freaking awesome. It's a brand new, no one knows, it's a, br- it's a brand new engine, dude. It's all new. It's not from like, last year's and they like kind of tuned it up and like fiddled with this and that like dude it's a brand new engine the rs6 and rs7 are like dude they're making like 800 pound feet of torque yeah so like wagons are like the ultimate sleeper and i feel like 
I don't know, even five years ago, nobody really cared that much for wagons. And they kind of, I mean, over the generations, like, hot hatches were cool, but station wagons were not cool. Another, yeah, It was yeah. always like a station wagon. You know, you think of like the old school vacation yeah. movies, like they're in the station yeah, wagon, the, the woody side. Yeah, yeah, so it's like, that was always the view of these wagons. But then... They started making these performance wagons, but they never really hit in the States. And a lot of these car companies didn't bring performance wagons or wagons at all to the States. So for a long time, we were wagonless and uh, or, or just like extremely limited in our options or wagons and had no performance options. The only option out there was obviously the E55 wagon. Or like the the a, a Mercedes AMG wagon, which is also a hammer of a car, and I would still Freaking probably, awesome. I actually might still prefer that over the RS6. I'm just talking about the RS6 because it's in the hype back. Because the E63's yeah. been out for Some, three years and no one talks about it, but it's legitimately the best car that Mercedes makes. I will say that, and I'm I've driven them all. I'm get, I'm high fiving you on it's that. It's better than the G, <laughs> dude, the GT63 oblong weird. Thing that they made it's that a little coupe. turtly dude it's, it's a, a little huge car turtly for the turtle club yeah <laughs> and <laughs> it's like <laughs> but the e 60 wagon is the coolest car it is so cool i've spec that thing at like it's 30 so freaking times fast it's, it's just cool because it's so fast but like you can imagine having baby seats in the back i mean i don't dude i drove I'm one of the guy had two he got pulled down all the seats and the guy had two surfboards and it was sick and there were jiggling around yeah it was like it's like <laughs> dude, it's the coolest car i've spec that full thing like send. full send and like is drift mode and all that stuff like the audi won't have that but the audi is at least like bringing the heat back it's bringing the wagon it's brought but the i mean besides back, which is cool and besides the fact that it's a wagon it's a performance wagon it's insanely styled very very good job that it did, i was that it like did. on the fence about a lot of the mm, recent Audis like this new B9 true, Audi true. and uh, like a normal A6 kind of like but the, this the yeah. RS6 is like no but the, I think they like. did a good job with the A6 and I think it translates well into the performance RS6 but I mean the thing is it's it was like 700 horsepower the yeah. thing is an absolute monster and I think it's awesome because it's like the biggest thing in car news despite 1900 horsepower electric exactly pin exactly. and and you know new koenigsegg yesco it's like everybody's looking at the rs6 and i think that there's and something special and that is noteworthy so definitely i think that's freaking rad man seriously wow 30 minutes yeah i mean uh you start talking about cars and stop talking about cars <laughs> and don't stop, stop talking about stop talking cars. so hopefully we <laughs> We gave you enough about who we are, why we're here, um, what we came to do, and what we came to not do, and um, we're excited to get started and and make some more podcasts. This is episode one of many. Guys, we're going to be the YouTuber douchebags. Like, like, share, subscribe, send it to your friends. Like... You're this not gonna, gonna fucking see me at a show with a camera in front of my face, like, oh no, that's such a GT. <laughs> yeah. This is the sickest Lamborghini ever. That's not me. I might pull somebody aside and have a little conversation, have a little interview, but yeah, I'm not gonna. We're not about that. I'm over that. I mean, I'm cool with those guys. They're they're awesome. Keep doing your thing. Keep going out there, and make content. Um, I just wanna, we just wanna do something a little different. We wanna be a little more honest and a little more this and that, but. Guys, way more episodes to look forward to. Seriously, like we're gonna keep doing this. Like, I don't want to say like bi, bi monthly or whatever, but we'll just kind of do it when we do it. Whenever we feel like it, we'll do it. And yeah. you gotta make when it. When we have you know. good enough content, we go to shows every weekend. Not every show is fantastic. Some shows are absolutely ridiculous. Um, I'm a spotter, so I'm always out and about, just trying to find cars driving around. So. We're going to share some images. We're going to share some videos. We might even highlight some other photographers. So, you know, we obviously can't make it to every single show. So it's always nice to uh, have some content from other people to show so everybody can get a taste of what's going yeah. on. Yeah. I mean, we're open to anything. We'll see where this show takes us. Um, but just keep looking out for more. 
Follow us on Instagram at the Speedy Guidi at LA Car Spotter underscore underscore. Don't forget that. And we'll see you guys next time whenever we decide to do this again. Peace. High five.